What's up, Bulls fans? Welcome into the Bulls Report. My name is Patrick Seatman. Coming up on today's show, we actually have a pretty interesting story and report around Zach Levine and is he turning the page and maybe embracing the direction of this Bulls franchise? Then also, we do have some terrible injury news around Lonzo, Patrick Williams, and Zach Levine himself. But before we dive into that, if you guys could, Help us reach 10,000 subscribers here on the channel. We're less than 250 away. So if you guys haven't already, and we're a new channel for you guys here on YouTube, just hit that subscribe button, lock us in, and you'll just stay up to date around the latest around your favorite basketball team. So hit that sub button. Don't miss a thing around your Chicago Bulls. So let's dive into the story here. It's uh, Darnell Mayberry on Zach Ovine. Now, this was an interesting report that came out yesterday, but here's the quote. In off-season conversations with Bulls leadership, including coach Billy Donovan. Levine has vowed not to overstep or stunt the development of younger players, according to a team source. It could be a tricky balance for a player who likes the ball in his hands and is skilled at creating his own shot. But Levine has taken the first step by showing up, talking about the, Viking, or the Bulls offseason workouts here. But I'll tell you what. You guys know this if you guys have watched the channel here for a while as I've been in the, you know, trade Zach Levine at all costs before the start of the season camp. But, you know, if this report is true that Levine is buying into the youth movement, that kind of fires me up because then I wouldn't be fully, you know, upset if the Bulls aren't able to trade him before the start of the year. And maybe Levine takes more of an off-ball role where he understands that Kobe White, Josh Giddy, these younger players, they're going to be getting most of the attention offensively, most of the shots. And Levine maybe showing some self-awareness saying, hey, if I want to maybe get dealt to another team, I need to show them that I can play off-ball. I can be that tertiary option. And I also had this like kind of thought. Does this hint that the Bulls are kind of fully shifting to this rebuild here? And, you know, what do I mean by that? Like, you know, if clearly there's a conversation had between the Bulls front office, Billy Donovan and Zach Levine, that, hey, we understand that you may be the most talented basketball player on this team. We understand you might have the most skill and you may be the best player. But that is not our goal of the season is to get you the shots and keep on developing you. We want to develop our young talent and kind of aim for a championship window in, let's just say, three, four, five years from now. So reading that, clearly there is at least some continuity within, uh, within the Bulls front office and coaching staff that maybe the goal of this season is not necessarily to win the most games, but to develop your young talent. And, you know, Levine's contract is definitely the biggest kicker of why he has not been traded just yet. Like, if you just reduced all these numbers by, let's just say, $15 million, per year, which is obviously a lot. I mean, it comes out to be $45 million total. But, you know, Levine would have been traded already. But since his cap hit is 43, 46, 48 million, plus the player option and the trade bonus for the Bulls, it just makes it, you know, very unappetizing for the Bulls to want to deal him. But I still think Levine is a good basketball player. And yes, he is coming off his worst year of the last four. I mean, only averaging 19 and a half points per game last season in just 25 outings. However, if you look at Levine the three years before that, he was still very, very efficient. Like, he was a true kind of borderline 50-40-90 guy. And you look at that 2020 season. I mean, the dude was averaging 28 points a game, five boards, 50% from the field, 42% from downtown. I mean, that's fantastic, fantastic stuff. So maybe a team like the Lakers, if they see Levine really, really embrace this off-ball role throughout the first four, uh, first month or so, then maybe they call up Chicago and be like, hey, we need him to get us over the hump. But, you know, I would still trade Levine. Like, I think this is a cool story. I think this is cool out of Levine as he's maybe showing some self-awareness here. But, again, I'm not fully sure if this story and rep uh, report is, you know, 100% true. I'm going to believe in Mayberry, but – it's just a weird conversation, and especially a weird conversation for this to come out right before training camp starts. So, you know, if Levine does get dealt, you know, it is going to be midway through the year. I think we can fully put the bed like the Levine trade rumors before the start of the season. I just think there's no chance of that happening. But, you know, four teams that could trade for him during the year, let's just say the San Antonio Spurs. They get off to a hot start. They're 20-5, and five, and we're like, damn, maybe Wemby is a whole lot better, you know, a year earlier than we thought. Maybe they're saying, we go get a guy like Zach Levine. We could go on a playoff run. I've already kind of made a huge case for the Lakers. You know, I really do believe a big three nucleus of Levine, LeBron, Anthony Davis. They all complement each other very, very well. I could see that working out. And then the Warriors, you know, you need more talent around Steph Curry. Maybe they just view Levine as a guy where it's kind of like, hey, Steph, like we understand we haven't put the best roster around you, but here's a guy with all types of talent. Try and go make it work. 
And then the Clippers as well. I mean, the Western Conference is loaded. I like what the Clippers actually did this offseason. They got a lot of young and athletic wings who can play both sides of the floor, but they need more talent on that team if they want to, you know, sniff a deep playoff run. So maybe Levine is that guy. But I think the trade will not happen before the year. If it's going to happen, it'll probably be at the deadline. But again, we've said this the last two off, season, off seasons. It would not shock me if the Bulls, you know, keep him on the roster and he is still there, you know, this time next year. But I'll ask you guys this. I'm just talking about ever. Like, will Levine finish out his contract in Chicago is necessarily what I'm asking. But you guys let me know. What say you? Will the Bulls ever trade Zach Levine? Will you ever wake up with that Woj bomb? Or I guess not Woj bomb anymore if you guys heard Woj retired. But maybe Shams. Maybe we get that tweet notification that the Bulls are trading Zach Levine to the Los Angeles Lakers. Will it ever happen? Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. Now, I do want to talk about some injury news around the Chicago Bulls as there are a couple concerning reports, more specifically on Patrick Williams. I'll share with you guys those quotes here in a second. But first off, I want to tell you guys about the sweet deal we have going on right now where you guys can get a two T-shirt pack uh, for about 20 or 30% off. If you guys head to chatsports.com slash Bulls Combo, I got this a couple summers ago. Wear it all the time. Super comfortable. Look good. Feel good. Get a two T-shirt pack by heading to chatsports.com slash Bulls Combo. So Jamal Collier of ESPN just wrote up an article talking about the general NBA injury news, and he gave three updates on Lonzo Ball, Patrick Williams, and Zach Ovine. And we can start off with the you know, most injury-prone player in the league right now, Lonzo. Saying more than two years since his last NBA game, Ball appears to be on a path towards playing this season. He has been ramping up his on-court activity this summer and started playing in five-on-five -five scrimmages for the first time last month. But the number two pick from the 2017 draft has not appeared in an NBA game since January 2022 after undergoing three different knee surgeries, including a cartilage transplant. Carried on to say the Bulls have been optimistic that Ball will play this season, but they have not revealed a plan about how they will work him back on the court. That's a little concerning to me. And they will uh, need to figure out how he fits into a crowded backcourt that includes Levine, Giddy, Kobe White, and Io. And that last part was a little concerning to me, that they don't necessarily have a plan. The date is September 23rd. Season starts in a month. How do you not have a plan for Lonzo Ball in terms of when he is going to return to the court? That doesn't really make sense to me. Also, that just kind of speaks to just the Bulls organization as a whole just being a terribly ran organization top to bottom. So I don't really have any two overarching thoughts on this it sounds like Lonzo's rehabbing well but if all that were true wouldn't we get a plan of like oh Lonzo's gonna play in the first preseason game instead we've necessarily you know heard nothing but I still you know wish the best for number two one of my favorite players in the league but you know a Levine injury update from Jamal as well saying Levine's disjoined 2023-24 season ended after he only played in 25 games. A pair of right foot injuries leading to a season-ending surgery in February, Levine played in the fewest games of his career since 2017-18 season when he first came to Chicago following uh, surgery on a torn ACL. It was also one of the reasons his trade market stalled this summer amid rumors of his exit from the Windy City. Levine, now entering his eighth season with the Bulls, having made a full recovery from surgery and is among the players who reported early for training camp. I will give Levine credit. I effing love that he reported the training camp early because clearly he understands that the Bulls fans and just honestly the NBA world doesn't really view him as a class act type of guy. Like it's not like we view Levine where it's like, oh, this dude, he does everything professionally. Like, we've heard the drama. We heard that kind of diva narrative around him. And I think it's for right reason. But I love that he reported the camp early. He's saying, hey, if I'm still on the Bulls, I have an obligation to my contract. I want to be a leader on this team. I'll tell you what, Levine, after these past two reports, kind of uh, kind of turning my uh, page on him just a little bit. But let's get into Patrick Williams. This is a concerning part here. Williams experienced discomfort during the team's minicamp in Miami and required uh, required additional rest in recent weeks. His availability, uh, his availability excuse me, and the biggest unknown in the short term. Long term, the setback forces one to wonder whether Williams will be able to assemble a breakout season given his lengthy time off. Uh, his last appearance in a game was January 25th and hasn't played much five-on-five five since. This is disappointing. Um, again, it just gets me back to this freaking Bulls front office. Like, if you knew Patrick Williams was hurt, why would you give him a five-year, $90 million deal? Now, obviously, he did just re-aggravate this injury at training camp, so I'm not saying they, like, could see a 
around the corner here and know he was going to re-aggravate in it, uh, that injury during training camp. But you got to just – you just got to get a better better grip on this whole thing. Like, that contract, I always supported it because I believe in Patrick Williams and his breakout. But if he is not healthy, you can't break out. I thought Jamal Collier here nailed it on the head with that uh, – that last part there. So this is disappointing, Ron Williams. Hopefully he's out there. And, hey, if you guys want to wish Patrick Williams and the rest of this Bulls roster some uh, healthy luck this upcoming season, just hit that thumbs up icon. Um, because even, you know, no matter how you feel about the Chicago Bulls, you still want a healthy basketball team out there. And, you know, we can talk about all the issues in the front office, you know, the roster construction. But, you know, injuries are definitely one of the bigger reasons why the Bulls have struggled over the last couple of years. Now, if you guys want to give me a follow on Twitter, that's the handle right there, at Pat Seeps. Give me a follow over there, and I'll give you guys a follow right back. See you guys next time. Go Bulls.